and here we go into the special stage again. Uh -huh. And here we go. So, I actually like this song by the way. This may not be as awesome as the um, original special stage music, but as far as Spencer Nielsen's work go, this is actually something that I can tolerate. So, we're just going through this um, level which has a planet in the background. I, I'm honestly not sure where the hell this special zone is and what the creative process behind making it was. I mean, there are planets in the background, no matter which way you turn, by the way, so there's the same planet on both sides of the map. Also, why exactly does water slow you, um, cause your time to go down? I mean, it can slow you down, yes, but cause your time to go down? That just makes no sense to me. These special stages are really cracking juice. I mean, the one from Sonic 1 was like this lullaby land with all um, things flying about, which made no sense at all. But you can understand because it was a special zone. Then you got the half pipe, and then you got the globe, and none of these really make any sense beyond the gameplay thing. And they always try to implement it into the story. And here I am in the bad future. Ooh, it's evil. Unfortunately, the music isn't evil. Which is kind of sad because I like evil music. Fortunately enough, this is one of my favourite bosses of the game because it's so weird. I'm also sure that this is one of those superfluous changes that were made to the American version, which we're just about to go in. And there's a double loop de loop, baby. Oh wait, no, it's not. One of the versions of this game, I think it's just because I'm in the uh, bad future rather than the good one, but he's wearing the red mech armor right now rather than the pink one. I like the fabulous pink mech armor. Fabulous pink is really fun. And there he's dead. And he gets away by a jetpack this time, which is pretty damn cool. Not exactly the most fun thing in the world, but hey, it's better than his helicopter thing. And there's the flower power drone, where we release all of the flowers. Why Sonic cares about flowers, I don't know. Perhaps he's become a hippie since Sonic 2, or 1. But in the original game, he was releasing all of his friends from these capsules, which I didn't mind. Whereas now he's releasing flicking flowers from them, which makes no sense to me. I mean, he could be getting... Oh gosh, not the Collision Chaos music. Fortunately, this is where we meet Mr. Badass for the first time. Everybody loves Metal Sonic. Oh, and there's Amy Rose, but fortunately I have a shield so she can't grab onto me. And here comes Mr. Metal Sonic, who totally ignores me and grabs Amy, despite the fact that he probably could have kicked my ass right about then, since I had just a shield and no... um... rings. Plus, of course, Metal Sonic never actually gets a chance to fight Sonic at any point of this game, which is unfair, because I actually think that he would have beat the crap out of him. And I'm pretty sure anybody out there would agree with me, because, let's face it, beating the crap out of people is just what Metal Sonic does. I don't know why he's seen so awesome within the Sonic community, it's just who he is, you know? But he's never actually had a chance to properly fight. In Sonic Heroes, he turns into the uh, thing Bobby. In Knuckles, he's that big red thing. It really feels like you've never actually had a chance to fight with Metal Sonic himself, which is pretty unfair because he's like the most worshipped character of all of the Sonic bad guys. Let's face it, we all know why we love him. It's because of his character design and nothing else. Seriously, it's just character design. And this is an example of Spencer Nielsen just playing the same freaking chord on his damn um, stupid guitar over and over and over again. I'm going to ignore him and go back to the... I realise that joke would have been funnier if it was Back to the Future, but hey, I'm not here to entertain you. Well, I guess I am, but... Oh, I'm not even entertaining myself at this point. And so, once again, we wait for the PS2 to load up, and we end up in Le Past. Where I know exactly where to find the, um... 
fishing. So we're all cool. I hit this red screen. Jump off. Bamf! All robots are dead. And we get to listen to the boring, boring, boring Japanese Collision Chaos Pass music, which, by the way, if you notice, at the top of the stage here, you can see uh, Earth slash Mobius, which I thought was very, very, very cool little twist. Or touch, sorry, twist. That you're able to see the other planet, which means that we're totally upside down on the, um, this planet, which has some very weird gravity. And we're just walking through all of the traps which are put here. Level design in this game is so freaking trippy. I'm not exactly sure what happens, because none of this is really created by Eggman. It's just currently existing stuff, especially when you're in the past. At least in the future, you've got his uh, robotic stuff covering all the landscape. But I just don't understand how natural progression can cause so many huge differences in the um, world. Like, things just completely moving and paths becoming solid and everything. But, hey, I don't know. I know nothing about the progression of uh, fictional worlds which teleport into other worlds. The little planet makes no sense to me at all. I just think it's a cool idea. Because you've got this planet which is inside of another planet. I mean, that's just trippy. Let's face it, this entire game was inspired by LSD, and I'll keep on making these comments while I'm in the freaking special zone. Coincidence? I think not. So, here I go trying to kill all these things again. Fortunately, I'm actually really good at the special zone. Where the hell's the last one? Okay, um... Running around here, and by the way, I've just happened to notice that the um, place here in the background is some kind of uh, ultra-futuristic lab area, which makes me wonder whether this is actually an alien planet that we're being teleported to. I'm pretty sure that Sega could have found fact some really weird theory about these other worlds that the little planet teleports to and doesn't manages to float about in and have its own gravitational pull and everything. But it does disappear once a month, so if it goes to other places, then that would explain where the hell our um, time episodes are coming from. So, I don't know. It's a better theory than any. So, here I go through this level, which includes some of the most boring parts of the game. Fortunately, this game does have the best boss design in all of um, Sonic. So, I won't complain on that level. Plus, of course, it ha does have very nice ways of getting you to the past, which I'm going to right now. Yay, Sonic spinning around. I'm spinning around. Move out of my way. I'm going to the past. Take me back in time, etc. Yeah. You'll probably be hearing me sing a lot. It's um, my white noise filler. And there we go. The machine is broken again because I remember this game far too well. I'd explain where it is, but I'm guessing that anybody out there listening to it has played Sonic CD enough times to know exactly where the hell I am. And now I just need two more rings and I'll head to the end of the level. So... These weird glass balls are just placed about the... Like many things within the Sonic se series, these are just gameplay elements, but why are there anti-gravity glass balls with um, green gems inside them which shatter as soon as you touch them. I mean, seriously, you could entertain yourself for days just wondering where the hell all of this shit came from. Apologies for the language. I realise that I'm probably going to be posting this onto the mofo and we'll have to put a language warning on now. Oh dear. And here I go, back to the future. Spin, spin, spin. Round and round and round he goes, where in time he stops, well, I know. 